this is our first session now in Ephesians 6, 1 to 4, concerning the obedience of children to their parents. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is a quotation from Exodus 20, verse Verse 12, it's the fifth of the Ten Commandments. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. Namely, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. So, Father, as we try to understand what it means for children to obey their parents and what the roots of that obedience are and what the promises of that obedience are, please guide us. Help me to be faithful to your whole counsel here in Jesus' name. Amen. So obedience, do what mom and dad say. Your parents, if you only have one, do what dad says or do what mom says. In the Lord, that means, I think, in relation to Jesus, your Savior. And it's real crucial here in teaching our kids that we take this seriously and go back to chapter 2 and remind them how you get into a relationship with Jesus so that you can say, I am in the Lord. By grace are you saved through faith. That's how you get in. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. So in the Lord is what we're talking about. And you're created in the Lord. You come in through faith. You come in by grace. And you're now you're in in Christ Jesus, and your your purpose is good works, which would include obedience to your parents. So make clear when teaching your children, not just to obey, but to obey in the Lord. Bring them in by faith to a relationship with Jesus so that their self-understanding, and when that can become clear to a child, is different from child to child. For my for my children, it was more or less eight years old or so, when that started to get really clear for them. So in the Lord, obey. You obey because of what Christ has done for you. He's, he's your Savior. He, he has forgiven you for your sins. He'll take care of you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. You are in relation to the Lord, so obey because that's what you do when you're in the Lord, because this is right. And I suspect it's that simple because children need simplicity, right? There are some complex things here, really complex. But this is simple. Johnny, obey your daddy because it's right. If he says, why, why should I obey daddy? It's right, meaning it, it fits, right? It fits. It fits who the Lord is. It fits who you are. It fits what the family is. God decides what is fitting and helpful and good and beautiful and right. That's what we need to teach our kids. God knows best. So it's right. Then he quotes the Bible. So you've, you're in the Lord. That's a motive. It's right. That's a motive. And now he's going to quote the Bible. Honor your father and mother. And you could go back to Exodus twenty twelve and read it. And then he says, this is the first commandment, and I think he means of the Ten Commandments. There hasn't been one yet in the list until this one, and here there's a promise. Why? Perhaps because children need help. Obedience is not easy, and they need to be told, God rewards, rewards obedience. That's what this means. A promise is attached to the command to honor your mother and father. A promise. 
God promises good things, that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land. Now, let's go back, and I need to show something here. Here's the text in Exodus. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Now think of this for a minute. There at Mount Sinai, say a child is eight years old hearing this at Mount Sinai, it will be 40 more years at least until they are in the land. So I don't think this is to be understood primarily individually here. I think he means if as a group, as Israelites, you are the kind of people who honor your mother and father instead of being, being stiff-necked and proud and arrogant and self-exalting and disrespectful, if you're that kind of people, then I'm not going to bring judgment upon you when you come into the land. You're going you're gonna to survive in the land for a long time if you're that kind of people. And if you say, but isn't this your here singular, just like it is back in Ephesians? The answer is yes, it is. But this phrase right here, that the Lord your God is giving you, that phrase occurs 29 times in the Old Testament, actually 28 of them in, in Deuteronomy, and it's always singular, and it always refers to Israel. Israel as a people, not individual kids or Israelites. Look, for example, at Deuteronomy 4.40. You shall keep this commandment. This is the same singular you. You shall keep the, his statutes and his commandments, which I command you today, that it may go well with you that your, uh, and with your children. So this you here is all of Israel with their children after you, and that you may prolong your days, same as promised in Exodus 12, in the land which the Lord your God is giving you, that the Lord your God is giving you. That's the exact same phrase, and this your is singular there, masculine, and referring to all of Israel. And so the promise, which looks like it's made particularly to children here in 2012, is actually made to the people of Israel. It's the same promise here that the Lord is God is giving you in the land that you come into for all time. So my interpretation of this promise here is he's telling us, look, God rewards obedience, children. He rewards obedience. There's a promise attached to this. He, he inserts a promise in the law for the first time just to encourage you children. And that promise, and this is where you need to teach your children well, is a promise made to Israel in the Old Testament that if they are the kind of society and they have the kind of families that are obedient and respectful and law-abiding in God's covenant, they will survive a long time in the land. Now, let me sum that up by putting what four, four statements down here. And then I'm going to pose a problem. So one, I'm just talking to my child now. Trust Jesus to forgive your sins and be your Savior. Savior from hell. Savior from Wrath, Savior from the judgment. Two, trust God that He always rewards obedience in the best way. He's God, right? He's wise. He's good. Three, know that obedience is right. 
It's just right. It's good. It's fitting. Children need simplicity. That is simple. Four. Therefore. Obey. And respect. I'm getting respect from honor. Here's obedience. Here's honor. And if your child wonders what honor means, I would say, your parents should be your heroes. Your parents should be admired. Therefore, obey and respect your parents. That's my summary now of this teaching for, for children. Starts with trust for Jesus because of in the Lord. It moves to always rewards because of this promise here and go well. It's right because of right and therefore obey and respect. Now, here's the problem. You have a child. He has a friend, an eight-year-old friend named Danny. He and Danny read the Bible together. He and Danny obey their parents. He and Danny go to church, and Danny gets killed in a car accident. And your child comes to you and opens the Bible and says, Daddy, did this, did this come true for Danny? I thought, I thought this meant that it would go well and he would, he would have a long, long life on earth. And he didn't. What would you say to your child? Well, if you've taught them well, they have at least some background with the kinds of thoughts that I was developing from Deut Deuteronomy and Exodus, but they've probably forgotten all of that. So what would you say? I would sum it up like this. I would say, you know, we're so sorry we lost Danny. But I want you to know that this promise that God rewards obedience did not fail for Danny. You and Danny are in the Lord because you trusted Jesus. And nothing will separate you from Jesus, not even death. And so this promise came true for Danny. Things went well for Danny. Yes, he died. And that's really hard for you and, and Danny's parents. Things are not going so well for them, it feels like right now, does it? But for Danny, though he didn't live long on the land of the earth, Danny is going to live forever in the land of heaven. And someday, when Jesus comes back, Danny will come back too, and we will all, in the Lord, live on a new earth. And you might take them to Ephesians 2, 7. In the coming ages, God will show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ. Immeasurable riches, coming ages. This is a long time, namely forever. Danny is experiencing immeasurable riches of grace in kindness in Christ Jesus, and it'll never end, and you'll join him there someday, and so will I. And then you might take him to Romans 8. We know that for those who love God, like Danny and you, all things work together for good. Things are going well for Danny. Yes, they are. For those who are called according to his purpose. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ if we are in Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword or death, as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, no. In all these things, Danny is more than a conqueror through him who loved us so what it means when it says there's a promise is that God rewards obedience for those who are in Christ. It does go well for them. They do live long forever and ever. <laughs>